sit down yet. If only your ability to obey my rules was as good as your singing, I have to admit God has blessed you with a marvellous singing voice. Do not look smug, child. I don't particularly care for singing. This is more reading, writing and arithmetic, which is important to me. Sit and do not fiddle with anything on your desk. So, hmm, I noticed, child, you are the only girl here today. Where is your friend Katie and do not lie to me? Um, I think Katie's maybe ill or maybe helping her mother do the cooking. Maybe ill or maybe mm. help cooking? Maybe. At this time of day? Hmm. Well, if she is ill, child, Maybe I had better go and visit her at home and give her some castor oil. That may reinvigorate her somewhat. If, however, I think she is just skiving off school so she doesn't have to attend, she will certainly feel the wrath of my cane and she would receive six of the best, which is exactly what would happen to you if I believe you are covering up for her. I should hope not. Right, child. We're going to try some grammar on you this morning. I understand. Pencil down! Goodness sake! Look at all. As a girl, you are truly honoured to be studying grammar. Mainly this is something I would teach to the boys in the class. You should be concentrating more on your needlework or poetry. In fact, many girls, we believe, do not have a big enough brain to understand all about grammar. However, I have been instructed by Her Majesty's Government that we have to start to teach grammar to girls. So we will give it a very simple go. I will read the top line and then you will repeat it with me. Three little words you often see are articles A, an and V. Say that with me girl. Three little words you often see are articles A, an and V. So if you are reading, if you are writing, if you are speaking and you utter the words A, an or Z, those words are articles. What are those words? Articles. Articles, sir. What are those words? Articles, sir. Thank you. Now, I think before we progress much further, I want you to copy those two sentences onto your slate. Remember, child, you copy the script exactly as it is on the board, not in your own happy little style. In silence. Yes, sir. Children, I do apologise for my, for my pupil here. She is not... Not blessed with the greatest intelligence, even if her singing voice is indeed a gift from God. But I am the headmaster here at the school in St Albans. And at the school we are dead, seen and not heard, child. At the school we are actually based in the Lady Chapel of the Abbey. We have been here for almost 300 years, and today we are here in the year 1860. On the throne is our beloved Queen, Queen Victoria. And together with her government, they have given us instruction that all children are to come and learn wherever possible. Now this child here, is indeed lucky because the school here in the Abbey was for boys mainly because we believe that the intelligence of the girl is too small to bother educating. However, 
because this girl's father happens to be incredibly rich and quite a powerful gentleman in St Albans. I have been instructed to administer this child to our lessons wherever possible. And trust me, children, it is turning my hair ever more grey with every single day. What do we teach? As we can see, we are doing some grammar at the moment. But mainly we teach the three R's. So that would be reading, writing, and arithmetic, or maths, as you may call it. Sometimes in the classroom, there will be up to 60 or 70 children, and maybe only one or two teachers. That is very hard work. But that is why our discipline is so strict to make sure that the children behave and do what you tell them. Working in silence, being seen and not heard. However, I think for the moment, I'm going to share children a mystery object with you. Something that would be very familiar to school children in Victorian Britain. So, I have here this rather wonderful item. Now, as you can see, it is two bits of wood, which has got some holes in them, held together by a piece of ribbon. Now, children, I will give you three options of what this may have been used for in our Victorian school. And once I've shared those options with you, we'll give you a chance to stop this little recording for you to have a think about which is the correct answer. So, choice number one. Was this a kind of punishment that we would use on very fidgety children, whereby children may have to put their fingers through the holes of these to stop them from fidgeting? Choice number two. Was this a kind of toy that children may use if they were allowed to have a playtime in Victorian schools? Almost like a cat's cradle that some of you may be familiar with. Or your final choice. Was it a bit like a very simple abacus that we would use during arithmetic lessons, whereby a child would use their fingers in the halls to help them count and to do their multiplication. Well, children, I suggest in a moment you do indeed stop the video, have a think, talk to your teachers, talk to your friends, talk to your parents, and then rejoin us shortly, and I will tell you what this item was really used for. See you in a moment. And welcome back, children. Before I share what this mystery object is indeed is, I'm just going to have a... Child, I can't read upside down. Hold your slate up and show it to me appropriately. Oh my goodness me. Child, you may have been blessed with the singing voice of an angel, but you have been given the handwriting skills of a spider. That is some of the worst handwriting I have ever seen in my life. Put your slate down. Stand up and tuck in your chair. And you've got no choice, child, but to stand in the corner with the dunces hat on. Do not face the classroom, no one wants to see you. Face the, uh, in the corner. And do not move or make a sound. You stay there till I tell you you yes. can move. Children, I do apologise. So, I hope you had a good think about what this may be. Well, if you thought this was some kind of abacus to help some rather foolish children to count. A thoughtful idea, but not correct. 
If you thought this was some kind of item that children might use at play, like a cat's cradle, children would be very, very fortunate to have any toys to play with in our break time. Let's face it, they'd be even fortunate to have a break time at all. Not like some of you modern children who spend more time in the playground than actually learning things. However, if you guessed that this was a device to stop children from fidgeting, then you are indeed correct. As I mentioned earlier, discipline, as you can see, is very strict in the Victorian classroom. And if you had a fidgety child, the kind of child who might try and plait the hair of the girl in front of them, the kind of child who might keep poking the child next to them, the kind of child who couldn't put their pencil down when you wanted them to, then you would get the child to put their fingers through these holes, they would tie them behind their backs, and they would have to sit there for maybe 30 minutes without any kind of fidgeting, noise or movement. I think children it would be especially strict of me if I made this girl have to use the anti-fidget device whilst she's being punished for being a dunce. But do trust me children, if she continues to annoy me, I think that is something I will have to consider. Now, I think the time has come for me as a teacher to go and get a glass of water. My voice is a little, a little sore from having to teach so many children and having to raise my voice to certain ones of them. Girl, you stay there in the corner and do not move until I return. Yes, sir. In the meantime, children, it has been lovely meeting you. And until we meet again.